Did these town halls make a difference? What has taken place in the last week or two? The Hunter Biden stuff. Well, a lot of stuff has gone on in the last week. Does it matter with the polls? Well, the latest poll that just comes out just came out by NBC News Wall Street Journal uh, shows that Joe Biden is still holding steady with an 11-point lead. And one of the men responsible for conducting that poll is Jeff Horwitt, who is a pollster who works with NBC and the Wall Street Journal. He joins us right now on the line. Jeff, I appreciate you coming on. How are you? I'm great. Pleasure to be here. So, Jeff, talk to me a little bit about this poll. Obviously, an 11-point lead is a large one. Uh, Can you compare where we are right now to where we were four years ago, where Hillary Clinton was at, and what's the difference between now and four years ago? Right. That's a a great question. I think, look, the the, the top line numbers would suggest that Joe Biden has a similar, uh, if you look at just the trial lead, a similar lead to where Hillary Clinton was in 2016, and again, it is worth noting that she did, in fact, win the popular vote, national polling data uh, there, not, states notwithstanding. But uh, you know, the other things that, that have changed since then is we, uh, the country has had four years of what a Trump administration looks like. Uh, they have been able to evaluate uh, Donald Trump as president. They know what that is like. Uh, and uh, obviously what we're all living with now, they also um, uh, understand what, what COVID-19 is and what that's like, and they've taken a measurement of what, uh, how Trump has handled that. And, and you know, by, by all accounts, the, the, you know, it is not a favorable review for how he's handled this, and people have concerns about what he's done. So sure. that's changed. The other thing that's changed from 2016, which is different, is at that point, both candidates, uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, were viewed more negatively than positively. Donald Trump is still viewed more negatively than positively. But over the course of the campaign, Joe Biden has actually seen his personal ratings improve, and he's actually a net positive, which, given uh, the coarseness of our politics right now, is really a remarkable, uh, a remarkable finding. So, Jeff, what would you say to the naysayers out there? I would imagine many of them are Donald Trump supporters or Republicans that would say, hey, listen, Jeff, you know, why should I look at these polls and, and say they mean anything? Why should I trust any of these polls when four years ago pretty much everybody had Hillary Clinton leading Donald Trump and then Donald Trump becomes our next president? What would you say to them? Well, again, I, w- I would say that uh, you know, we do not elect our, our, our presidents uh, by a national vote. That is certainly the case. And uh, so, um, you know, even though that she did win the popular vote in 2016, which the national polls bore out, in a number of states that really mattered, particularly Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, uh, the, you know, the results were different. And one of the things, there are a couple of things that have changed in those states, uh, but I think what you'll see here is that in 2016, there was not much at all polling done the last couple of days of the election in those states. And if you look back at the exit poll in those states, uh, late deciders swung uh, overwhelmingly uh, to Donald Trump in those states. So the, the state-level polling uh, in those states, which if you look back at the real clear politics average or any of the averages back, uh, back in 2016, you will see that there was very little polling done the weekend before the election, uh, which would not have picked that up. Gotcha. Uh, you know, so I think that's an important distinction. And look, his margins, his disadvantage right now, he is trailing uh, Joe Biden in those states right now, and nationally, uh, you know, at similar levels. In our poll, we also uh, measured swing states, which those states include, and, and Biden's margin there is, is is almost equal to is 11 points overall at 10 points. Jeff, do you factor in voter registration or the changes from 2016 to 2020? Like, for example, Donald Trump won Pennsylvania in 2016. I think his his the the democratic advantage in voters was 500,000 or so that's down to i believe 300,000 why would you, i mean do you factor that in into your polls or is that, is that totally separate yeah no that's a very important part of this and i think we you know first off we're expecting record turnout uh you know uh you know both for you know democrats and republicans there's high enthusiasm uh for for really both parties there's not an enthusiasm advantage there but you know the calling that we do we use voter lists that are that are updated, um, you know, you know, monthly. Uh, so we're making sure that we're getting, you know, the most up to date uh, data uh, data there that we can. And so, you know, we're people who um, have registered and you know, very, you know, after even 2018 are in our are in our samples and we're and are being called. 
So if you're just joining us, we're speaking with Jeff Horwood. He is a pollster who just re- has been recently working on this NBC Wall Street Journal poll that shows Joe Biden is ahead right now by 11 points. So, Jeff, you are on record as saying that there are some signs that you believe that this race could still tighten up, which I agree with you on. Can you just explain to our listeners why you feel that way? Sure. Well, again, I think that the, the Joe Biden does have does have uh, you know eleven point advantage, and and um, I think uh, you know that is a large leap, but I think it could narrow uh, <clears throat> for a couple of reasons. The, the one is that uh, you know Donald Trump's job rating as president uh, has improved slightly from our last poll. Um, I think the you know the debate um, really did leave. People with a pretty poor impression of Donald Trump, and I think that you know, could be seen as a potentially a low point for him. So the further you get away from that, and if, you know, if, if he doesn't um, uh, have a, a second uh, similar effort uh, in, in the debate next week, I think you know that may help. But look, his, the job rating is 44 percent; he's getting 42 percent of the vote. So traditionally, job rating and, and that share the vote do track, and so you could uh, you share the vote do track for the incumbent. So you could see you know improving a couple ticks there, and then the economy remains uh, the top issue for voters, and that is uh, one of the, one of the few places in our poll that we found a position of strength for for uh, both Donald Trump over Joe Biden and Republican the Republican Party over the Democratic Party. So um, those do point to some places where. You could see, uh, you know, the race tighten somewhat. Although I don't know uh, that there's the data out here really supports a, a, a tight, you know, tightening more than more than a few points. Okay, two questions for you. One, where do you have the poll in Michigan right now? How big is Biden's lead? Well, we are not. You know, this is a uh, we are not really focused on the national uh, the national data here. Um, so, uh, you know, our poll, I can't speak uh, to where things are in Michigan. Just looking at some of the other public polls out there, um, you know, it looks to be around, uh, the public polling is showing around a seven, seven to eight point uh, a, a lead for, uh, for Biden over Trump in Michigan. And I ask that because the Travel Guard just released a poll, I believe today, that has Donald yeah. Trump with a, a 1.5 point advantage. Why would there be such a, dis- a disparity there, do you think? Well, it could be again. I'm not studying the the, the sample composition and, right. and, and 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 that. You would be careful there, but um, you know, it could be who they define as likely voters. Their partisan uh, composition. Uh, you know, those are things that um, that do uh, do make a difference. So, uh, you know, there is something to be said for. Um, you know, averaging. If, if you don't know much about uh, the, you know, each individual poll and the quality of the poll, that taking the averages uh, is a is a safer place to go. And looking just at Michigan, uh, you know, the, the last polls before the Trafalgar Group poll mm-hmm. were had Biden plus nine, Biden plus eight, plus eight, plus six, plus ten. Sure. And then there's this this one uh, poll that is that, that you know we do see here that has. Um, the, the Trafalgar has Trump plus uh, plus one, so it does look a little bit different. That being said, I will note if you go back to 2016 that uh, there was one poll in Michigan that had uh, that that had uh, Donald Trump winning. It was a Trafalgar Group poll. It was the only poll that was done. Um, it was the last poll up poll that was released in Michigan. It was the only poll that was done the weekend before the election. Um, so, um, you know, I don't want to d- diminish that. They have a record, obviously, in Michigan of, of getting it right at the very end uh, in 2016. Uh, I think, again, that was more a function, I think, then of the, of the timing of their poll and being the last ones in, which I think if you want to know who's going to win uh, in these states, you want the most recent data. And I think that's, that's super important. I think, the, again, their result here does seem to be a little bit of an outlier compared to, you know, because these polls are being done at the same time, which was different than what happened in 2016. Thank you. I wanted to ask you uh, this last question about the vice presidential debate. Did you think that it changed anything and made a difference in your poll? Uh, I I, I, I tend to think that it it didn't change a lot. I think that, um, you know, everything is relative, right? So I think there was a little bit more sense of normalcy. In the vice presidential debate, there was mm-hmm. a little bit more of a discussion on some of the issues and differences between the two parties. Um, so there could have been a little bit of a reset there. 
but um, you know, traditionally, vice presidential debates don't really uh, change the focus, and especially when you have uh, a figure like Donald Trump, who is so uh, polarizing uh, and sort of dominates uh, the the conversation and, and what voters are thinking about. I don't I don't know that that uh, debate did anything to really change yep. uh, hearts and minds one way or another. And I tend to agree with you on that, and I've said the same thing. I don't think it moved the needle one way or the other. Well, Jeff, really appreciate what you do. Great job, as always, and thank you for explaining your poll to our listeners. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Great to talk to you guys. Take care. Thank hey, you. Thanks a lot, Jeff. That is uh, Jeff Horwitz, smart guy, pollster uh, who worked on this latest NBC uh, Wall Street Journal poll.